Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Atolagbi or Tilly or Tiger with a triple R or Tilly the Tiger. But this video is not about me or my names. <laughs> In this video, I'm going to show you the process of the making of my prom dress. Now, let's just be clear. I'm too advanced for prom. <laughs> but I've been doing an Ankara series of 10 different Ankara series for 10 occasions. And by the way, check out this playlist for looks 1 and 2. This is look 3 and I decided an African print prom dress. Why not? So today, we're going to make one. My friend had warned me after my last video that I needed to stop putting out low effort, low quality drawings on the internet. Now, I'm not assuring you that you're about to see drawing that would wow you. In fact, if you are a professional artist or if you have eyes for art, just keep on ahead. Um, on this day, I actually put effort into my drawing. I drew a croquis, I fleshed it out, I drew the dress on it, and I used colored pencils to paint it. Now I measured about 0.5 inches here. Uh, the reason why I did this was because I wanted to have control on how the v-neck ended and to make it as narrow as possible so I, I made sure that there was a seam there. Now I am a size 6. A shoelace can actually go around my waist so if you have a rope of sorts that can go around your waist definitely tie it there. The waist is the smallest part of your torso. If you don't have a small part just put it somewhere above your navel. I'm trying to measure my shoulder to waist length something about my shoulder to waist length right i wanted to have a band at the waist that would end at the waist and i wanted the band to be two inches long so what i did was to deduct that two inches from the length of my waist so let's say that the length of my shoulder to my waist was 16.25 inches i deducted two inches from that that's 14.25 inches and that's what i measured here oh i think it's 14 and a half inches anyway deducted two inches from the length i measured that and then i added one inch seam allowance and i went on to draw a line on there i measured seven inches there indicating in my back so what i did next was to measure eight and a half inches this is supposed to be the armhole depth like hair to hair next thing i did there was to measure my bust circumference and i'm going to divide that by eight it's um eight inches so i measured eight inches here and i added two inches of stitching allowance i measured my waist 24 inches measured six inches on here and added two inches of stitching allowance so now i'm just going to use my ruler to draw a straight line joining that and i'm going to freehand draft the armhole yeah i did that Next up is the length of the strap on the front. This is the front bodies. So I crossed those two recent draftings and um, that point where they meet together is the tip of my bodies, okay? So next thing is just drawing the neck and using my curve to draft the rest of the bodies. So I straight night to connect this and around the straight line, I would just draw these curves that I never really measured, but that's about one centimeter on either side. They were supposed to contour my bodies. Cutting out the bodies, I added a little bit more stitching allowance because better safe than sorry. So what I did there was to cut out the bodies, cut out the contourings and all of that. Measurements remain the same. I simply contoured the back and I drew a straight line across for the neck. <laughs> 
so now what you're seeing are the pieces and i will just go ahead to sew all of them together install boning in my lining i mentioned that there would be a band in the final dress right the next thing i did was to measure the stitched bodies the length basically and to just cut out a band that's the same length as that This band is three inches wide because my final dress is going to have a two inch wide band. So one inch extra for seam allowance. Now we have this looking like this. I would go on to cut out my skirt. I'm just going to speed through this because I do this often. I went on to stitch my skirt to its lining and then we're going to put them together. When I tried it on, I had this issue. It was, it had a massive gape that I could not ignore. So what I did, the gape was two inches wide. Um, so I used the carve to create curvy dots in that area. So I went on to stitch the, the dots, the both of them, and also on the lining as well. And then it made sense. And stitching my bra cups, these are triangular bra cups, by the way, and stitched them to the top. <laughs> and then I sewed the straps. The straps are 2.5 centimeter wide pieces of fabric that I stitched together. And um, I used my loop turner to turn it out. The thing about this loop turner is that I used to use hair pins and um, safety pins to turn out my loops. And to be honest, I feel like they worked better than this one. The loop turner is more aesthetic though. It looks better on camera. Next thing to do after taking forever to turn that loop we're going to move right on to this requires a bit of foresight you know that you need straps inside the dress and you want to attach the lining you don't want to have to go back to do that so you know you just have to insert the straps first and place the lining on top of it and stitch it together there we have it the dress was looking cute at this point but we still needed to do more work. So measure the base, the hem of the skirt. And this was what? This was 14 one quarter inches. Basically what you want to do is to draw an arc that equals the size of where you want to attach the skirt to. Does that make sense? Not sure if that makes sense yet, but what I'm saying is that for the 14 one quarter inch, that means that what we have in total is 28 and a half inches. So I have to cut an arc that is 28 and a half inches in size, but I would also need to sew it. So I need a one inch allowance, seam allowance, and that makes 29 and a half inches. Now let's half that back. And when we half it back, it comes to 14 and three quarters, 14.75. We're going to do trial and error until we get 14.75. So usually people would do trial and error until they arrive at the right place. Like I think I started with a 10 and then I had to use a nine and then I had to use eight and three quarters, right? So that's how I arrived there. So 
at this point you want to measure the length of your dress i wanted my final dress to be 66 inches and then measure the rest of the length that you need to make up your dress from the arc that you have drawn to make it up to 16 inches measure that all around this is a folded piece of fabric by the way So you want to go ahead and connect all of those lines that you've drawn and you want to go in and um, cut, just cut. So this should look like this at this point. What I did next was to stitch the length of this. What I did there was to just draw a slanted line and to repeat the very same process that I already did with the first longer one. It's also just a semicircular attachment and the same principle applies. So this was me just drafting out what needed to be drafted out. <laughs> and then I went ahead to cut it. Right after this, I wore it over the dress, right? Over the slanted part of the dress and I stitched it on. Pin first, of course, and then go ahead and stitch. Next is to pick up the bigger attachment and attach it to the hem of the skirt. And then this dress is literally all done. 